Well, we are live on Couples Academy's page, and I am excited today because, listen, it's been a, a, quite some time since we've had the opportunity to come on here and deliver some phenomenal content, but we're excited uh, because as we prepare for 2019, we're going to be interviewing some great individuals, giving you some information that will really help transform your life. And I'm excited tonight because we're actually going to give you in these next few weeks everything that you need to position yourself for the new year. So now oftentimes when the new year begins, everybody talks about the importance of being a healthy you, having a healthy relationship, and there would be no one better uh, to partner with and to have dialogue with than a personal friend of mine, uh, Dr. Donovan Christie. Uh, this is a gentleman that I've known for a couple of years now. He has a phenomenal, phenomenal practice in Atlanta, Georgia, but more specifically, to be correct, Tucker, Georgia. Uh, and he is the president, uh, the co-founder of Anwan uh, Regenerative S uh, Center. And we're going to be talking tonight about the importance of healthy relationships. Now, one thing I know for a fact is in order to have a healthy relationship, you have to be a healthy you. You have to be healthy emotionally. You have to be healthy physically. And if you're not, it can have a tremendous impact on your relationship, on your family. And we kind of want to talk about that tonight. And so without further ado, uh, it is a, indeed an honor of mine. Now, Couples Academy, uh, we focus on really helping couples to have their best relationships. And so we partnered with Dr. Donovan and his foundation. Uh, and he is, in, in essence, he is our health director. And they do so many things around the world, making impact in people's lives. And so I want to introduce him today. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Donovan Christie. How are you, sir? Hey, um, Asani Pettiford. Great having you here, great being here, um, and to be given the opportunity to talk about health and wellness on your show. I'm excited tonight because I know that every single time I talk with you, I grow a few inches taller because I gain a level of wisdom and understanding that I can implement into my life that'll make a major difference. And I wanna really delve into it tonight. And so let's just broach the topic, what, you know, People often say a healthy you creates a healthy relationship. Uh, can you speak to that? Why is it so important to be physically healthy uh, in your life and what impact does that have on your relationship? Well, you know, when you're married um, or you're in a, a great um, monogamous relationship, one of the most important thing is to making sure that both you guys are healthy. You don't wanna be a burden to your spouse. And if you have high blood pressure, or if you are obese, which brings about a whole sort of other um, diseases, such as diabetes and heart disease, then you're, you're pretty much being a burden. And the last thing you want to do is to have a stroke or to you know, have a heart attack and then you know be become disabled. So it's very important that couples um, live a healthy lifestyle and keep their vigor, keep their health intact. Um, everything works better when you're healthy. You have better physical relationship. You have a better mental relationship. You can deal with stress on a better level when you're healthy. Everything goes to, to kaputs when you're not. Yeah, you know, I think that's true. You know, I've seen so many couples who once one of the spouses got sick, it played a huge financial toll, emotional toll on the relationship. And interestingly enough, poor health affects your sexual health. Isn't that correct? Oh, most definitely. Um, lack of conditioning. Um, and this affects men uh, to a greater extent than women because your cardiovascular system is important. And m many men, as they get into their mid 30s, 40s on up, they'll develop hypertension because they wouldn't have done the things that they needed to do to prevent it. Or um, you can say you have a genetic predisposition for it. But when we all get stressed out, lots of people don't know how to deal with stress effectively. And so there are hormonal changes that occur in your body that will cause you to have hypertension, that will cause you to have uh, anxiety and depression. So these are, are physical things that will 
Um, and oh, I lost you for a minute there, <laughs> Asani. Um, you came back. Um, yeah, so it's very important uh, for us to prevent those chronic conditions, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, and cancer, because that all has to do with it. Your immune system is better attuned to fight off cancer and to fight off infections when you are healthy, when you are practicing a healthy lifestyle. So and that's part of what we're gonna talk about tonight. Let's zone in on this. You know, when talking about healthy lifestyles, I understand that there are lifestyle medicines that you should take that will enhance your life. Can you kind of unpack that for us? Sure. And the thing about lifestyle medicine is that it's not, medicine is really, um, it's not a drug. It's not, if I told you that you could um, take a pill that would make you sexy, that would um, lower your blood pressure, that would lower your blood sugar, that would um, lower your cholesterol, right? You would say, give me that drug. But that drug is your lifestyle, it's, it's exercise. Once you, when you exercise on a regular basis, and I'm talking 30 minutes, an hour per day, you have 24 hours in the day. You should be able to give yourself that benefit at least five days a week, you know, six, even better, but you should always rest one day. You know, the, um, the, the Bible says you should rest a day and, and it's good medicine. Um, and you get a lot of these tips on healthy living in the Bible. Well, tell me, tell me about what would be an appropriate diet. Like, what should your diet be like? What should your daily physical fitness regimen or routine be like in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle? Yeah. And, you know, this has been argued for years and now there's a hot, hot debate, you know, but I like to look at it as a, a, a three part avenue. OK, so what you see is you have people who believe in a vegan diet, right, just eating pretty much fruits and vegetables and grains. And then you have on the other end, you have the, the paleo diet um, that focuses mostly on eating animal protein, okay? Or just protein. And so I don't believe, and I may get a lot of pushback from this, but I don't believe that either of those extremes is really what the Bible and what God intended us to do. So I, have adapted what well, my wife and I, we, we eat this way on a pretty much regular basis, it, the Mediterranean diet. And what that diet is, is basically the best of both worlds. You know, I don't think that God put us here on earth to be um, herbivores or just carnivores. You know, we're om omnivores, so we're supposed to eat both. But it's the way the food is processed, the way the food is generated. If you're shooting up the animals with hormones and antibiotics, you're gonna get disease. If you're eating a lot of chicken breasts and, they're, and those chickens are being fed um, estrogen or you're shooting them up, you're gonna get cancer. If you're eating plant-based foods that are loaded with pesticides, you can get cancer. I mean, so it's really the preparation. And the thing is that man, you know, have thought that they can be smarter than God. So they want to adulterate everything to make things bigger and shinier, and, but it's less healthy. No matter how good that apple looks when it's big, red, and rosy and shiny, it has less nutrients than if you did a genetically modified apple versus the original, the way God intended it, apple. But, but here's the thing. You have an industry that is making hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars pushing diets. And to your point, we go from one extreme to the other. I mean, people are sitting on huge fortunes giving false information. You know, you have the fat-free diet, you have the sugar-free diet, to your point, you, you, you've, got, you've got the Atkins diet. You, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And you're telling me that the Mediterranean diet is probably the most reliable, long-lasting, sustainable diet that will produce optimal health? Because I think that diet um, resembles the diet 
that is um, recommended in the Bible. That that's the main thing. Now, if you're eating, if you're eating a low carb, you know these are low carb diets. Those are, that's more towards the paleo side, where all you're doing is eating meat and fat, right? That can you cannot live. You become ketogenic. You can't live in a ketogenic state. So not on a long term basis. And they've done studies and they've, they've actually compared all these diets, a vegan diet to a ketogenic diet to a Mediterranean diet. And the healthiest diet really is the Mediterranean diet. There, there, are, things, there are things about the vegan diet because lots of vegans eat too much sugar. That's not a meat. They're eating too much sugar, too much natural sugar. And I know tons of vegetar vegetarians that are overweight. So when, when you think of it, food preparation, the way the food is, is made, manufactured um, as natural as possible, that is the key, right? And portion control, obviously. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so Natasha Paris, she says that the Mediterranean diet is a balanced diet. But we also have a comment from Jessica who says that I have primary prog uh, progressive multiple sclerosis and I suffer from extreme fatigue. I don't know how I can get my exercise in, never have an appetite either. So, I, you know, my question for you is for people who have physical challenges, diseases, disorders or whatever the case may be, what is an appropriate amount of exercise? What type of exercise should we be giving to have an ultimate uh, life? Yeah, um, and unfortunately, you know, um, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease, and we have over 40 autoimmune disease, the body actually attacking itself, and these are on a rise. They're, they're going as, as high as um, diabetes is right now and obesity. So there's something in the environment that's causing these autoimmune diseases. And it's all based on our nutrition. Um, granted, you have to have a genetic predisposition for that, but we are all stressed out. We're using, we're having mental stress, um, and we're not doing the right things like exercise and eating correctly and having good um, bacteria in our gut and taking in good oils. Um, and this is causing a problem for us. So when our body turns on us and starts to eat away our brain tissue or the lining of our tissue, that's multiple sclerosis. When it, when it turns against you and attacks the thyroid, that's Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you get hypothyroidism. When it turns against you and attacks your joints, then you're getting rheumatoid arthritis or juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. When it attacks your gut itself, then you have Crohn's disease and inflammatory bowel disease. So there's over 40 autoimmune disease. And it, this is the body attacking its own self. So what made it go wrong? Something had to happen that made it go wrong. And a lot of us have that genetic disposition. But you know, a lot of this stuff is, can be found on bit.ly, help me live well. Um, we're, we're getting ready for a total one day, um, pretty much makeover, if you want to call it that, uh, where we're going to be educating anyone who comes to this conference. It's a full uh, six to eight hour conference. Uh, it's going to be held at the Marriott um, Century Boulevard Emory um, down in Atlanta there. And it, we're going to talk all about nutrition. We're gonna have um, plans for people to, to take home with them so they can learn how to eat properly. Because I don't, it's never the extreme, remember that, okay? It's never the extreme and, and everything in moderation. You know, um, the, 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 the vegans and the, and the keto people, they're at opposite ends and they, they constantly are, are battering and fighting about this issue when the bottom line is that it's, um, it's all in moderation and it has to be the way the food is prepared. And you don't, you want to stay away from the processing that, that our um, country um, has just, you know, it's profit over health. So we're eating junk. So, so Doc, we have uh, LaShawn who says that she uses organic oil. I want to get your thoughts on that, but also Natasha says 
you know, she feels like the foods have been compromised. So how do you feel about supplements? Oh, I, 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 that's a part of our plan. Um, we give supplements, we recommend supplements. And if I can only, I can talk about three real quick so that I think everybody should be on. You don't want to wait until you get sick to start taking your supplements. You want to take supplements. Supplements are supposed to supplement a healthy diet and exercise and stress management program. So everyone should be on an omega-3. That's a fish oil. Um, you, those are important for the brain and the heart and the joints, and you should be on that on a regular basis. Um, the next one is probiotics for the gut, beneficial bacteria. There's so much research now that's showing that the bacteria in your gut hmm. um, helps to break down the foods that you eat, and we are working with them, there are trillions of them, in a symbiotic relationship where we win from them. So you need a good probiotics, and I recommend at least 20 billion colonies, and it should be assorted um, types of bacteria, good bacteria, so that the bad bacteria and the yeast and the fungus doesn't overgrow and create what we call leaky gut. Now, the supplement should be a pharmaceutical grade. It should not be where you can go, go pick things up because you don't know if there's heavy metal in it, you don't know if there's lead in it, you don't know if there's all the preservatives are in it. It has to be of a good company. So we actually sell omega-3 and probiotics in our office. And wow. then, yeah, and then, yeah, the, then the third supplement I think everyone should be on is a good multivitamin. You need to, to correct for any of those micronutrient deficiencies that are very, very capable, especially when you're eating devitalized vitamins and uh, devitalized fruits and vegetables because now the soil doesn't have all the stuff that it needs to be in it because of rapid farming techniques and so on. You have to supplement your diet with, um, with supplements with, you know, to make it, everything works better. So, so we've been talking about eating, right, in your diet or your nutritional plan, but let's talk about physical fitness for a second. So, so the question is, why should I exercise and, and what are the benefits? Oh boy. Um, you know, I, I mentioned a few before, but if you want to look good, if you want to have the energy to do the things that you do every day, um, you know, you need to exercise. God gave us over 600 muscles in the body, and those muscles are to move. We need to move. We, can't, we weren't meant to sit around a desk for eight to 10 hours a day in front of a computer screen, very much like I'm doing now. <laughs> but you know, we're supposed to be actually going after our food. We were intended to be hunters. You know, you don't have to hunt a plant down. That's just one thing that right there that tells you that, you know, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to have a balanced diet. And it's all about balance. It really is all about balance. So um, um, brain function, it helps with anxiety, it helps with depression, um, it lowers your body fat, and it improves the, your muscle tone. So why wouldn't you want that? So, so Doc, you know, everyone has a different philosophy on how much exercise is required. Some say that you can overexercise. Some say you know you can underexercise. What's the appropriate amount, and what is the appropriate type of exercises to do? Yeah. And, and that's a very good question. And it really depends on the type of, just for regular people, I think 30 minutes a day, five days a week is, is adequate. Now, if you want to be, a, a lot of us are weekend warriors and we like to go out and compete and do little 5Ks or we'll do um, a bike race or, you know, even a triathlon. Those people require more exercise. And obviously, the, the more you do is the more, you, if, especially if you don't have a trainer, is the more you risk injury. So you, you always have to um, know what you're doing within your capacity. And a good trainer will tell you this is how much you should do. But you don't want to just do it by yourself because you'll stay stagnant unless you have somebody say, OK, well, you've, you have accomplished this level. So now let's go to another level. Let's push you a little bit more. And that's why trainers... And, you know, when you look at the professional athletes, they all have trainers. It's not like they don't know what to do, but they need that person 
to direct them and guide them in their activities. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just say you brought up the 5K and I, I would tell you, I've done two 5Ks in my life. And the only reason why is because of your foundation and how annually you have this amazing 5K bubble run for the entire family. And I tell you, my entire family has been motivated and has been involved. And if it wasn't for what you do for the community, I don't know if I would have ever gotten started. So I appreciate you for what you do. Uh, that, that, that is definitely my heart. You know, and that's, that's that altruistic portion of our practice. When, when my mom, you know, my mom um, passed from chronic conditions and it, it, it motivated me to um, start this foundation back in 2002. And now every year we have a activity like the 5K and, and then also, you know, we go to different impoverished nations and provide free medical care as well. Mm. So, yeah, we're global in that sense. Uh, but the practice, practice, once again, I want to say that um, if you go to bit.ly slash help me live well, um, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about is going to be right there for you to, to see. And it's all free right there. The conference, though, um, is not free because it's a full day. Lunch and breakfast is provided, and we're going to have a good time, and we're hoping to get a lot of people to come so that they can set off 2019 in the right avenue. They can't say they don't know what to do. Right. People will know what to do and then not do it. You know, And that's the, that's the part of me that is the hardest part when I'm with patients. I'm like, well, but you said you were going to do this, and... And then they'll, well, you know, this came up. Life is going to happen. Life is going to happen. You're going to have stressors. But how are you dealing with the stress? That's what it's all about. You know, I say it all the time. Knowledge is not power, but the proper application of knowledge is power. You can know all that you need to know, but if you don't do anything with what you know, then you're not going to get any results. And so hey, that's why I appreciate you because you, not only do you give the information, but you encourage, you motivate, you inspire you, you're like a supportive coach that whips people into shape. And so you just have such a comprehensive way about working with your clients that brings about results. And, and I appreciate that about you. But let me, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. So I deal with a lot of couples, right, who go through um, all types of stress in their relationship, emotional trauma, all types of things that could tear literally their marriage and their family apart. So when they come to me, they're dealing with a lot of emotional stress. And so my question for you from a medical perspective is, what impact does stress have on the body? So in essence, what impact does a, a tumultuous, a stressful marriage have on your physical health? Well, you know, I, I love that question because that part of, all right, so, you know, having a good sex life is um, a part of a healthy marriage. And when one person, when one or both partners are not at their optimal health, um, you're going to have sexual dysfunction. Sexual dysfunction is one of the main things why um, couples um, will separate. You know, th that may be the underlying, the background thing. Um, but it's very important um, for couples who are stressed to have good ways of dealing with their stress. And what, what we do, uh, my wife and I, you know, because exercise we talked about, but it's, it's probably one of the best stress relievers, you know, you, and there are hormonal things that are happening. You know, you are lowering your cortisol after your exercise. You are increasing endorphins, good feel-good um, hormones that are helping you to fight the stress. And cortisol is a stress hormone that wreaks havoc, havoc on the body. It's a catabolic hormone that can eat your brain away, if you want to think of it. People who are chronically stressed, their memory is bad. Um, their um, energy level is low, um, they have sugar cravings, all the bad things. They get swollen from, um, and that's a direct effect because um, cortisol holds on to sodium. 
So your your body becomes like um, what we call cushionoid, um, where you get um, you you've seen tons of people like that, but you just don't know that's what we call it. But it, it's a cushionoid feature um, when they get very very stressed like that, and they can't lose weight. You wonder how come they can't lose weight if you meditate. Let's talk a little bit about the spirituality. If you're meditating every day and you truly believe in God and you truly believe that he's not going to give you anything that you can't handle and you know that he's going to handle that whole thing, then you should just give it to him and not fret anymore. But too many people, especially Christians, will say, oh, I'm giving it to God. And then they're still worried. They're still they're still in this mode of worry, worry, worry. You can't change. The only thing you can do is change the way you respond to these stressors because you're going to have stress. And the Bible says that you will have stressors. You will have trouble. So knowing that, rest assured, do what you have to do. Be rightful and uh, and be intentional and get good rest mm -hmm. and, you know, rest and get good exercise, pray or meditate. Um, I, I like doing stretches. Uh, so we do yoga stretches. Um, and that's a good way. Tai Chi is an excellent way really? of, of, of getting rid of stress. Physical stress, almost definitely. It's, it's an awesome thing to do on a regular basis because we, uh, unless your stress goes away, and I don't know anybody who doesn't have some element of stress. Um, some people are so stressed, they don't even know they're stressed because they're living that way. Right. You know, this, this constant stress thing. Well, you know, I just, I'm not, I don't even know I'm stressed. But yeah, so yeah, you, you need to utilize some of these, uh, what we call relaxation type techniques to get rid of stress out of your body. Listen, I would encourage everyone who's watching right now to take heed to what Dr. Donovan is saying. If you don't have a physician, you really need to come into his clinic because he has such an amazing practice, such a high level of customer service. Tell us quickly about your, your practice and what you offer. Okay, well, we have, um, I have a concierge practice. Um, and what that is, is it's kind of like a VIP treatment where you come to the office and um, you get a full hour um, to, to um, an hour and a half um, with me as a personal, as your personal physician. Um, that's up and above. That concierge, where you have this one-on-one -on -one relationship um, and you get um, access to me um, pretty much 24-7, that's a, that's a different level of service. Now we have the regular practice that um, the majority of our patients are seen, I'd say 90, 95%. And there, my wife, who's also a nurse practitioner, my daughter is a nurse practitioner and two other physicians staff those two clinics. One is in Haightville by the airport. The other one is in Tucker. Um, and they have the same mindset just that with insurance-based medicine, you just don't have it as much time. So how we give back is through these types of conferences, through our foundation um, to help other people you know, on an ongoing basis because it's always better to give than to receive. Uh, Doc, listen, um, we have people who tune in to our live broadcasts and follow our posts all over the world. So I'm not sure necessarily where Heather is at, but Heather is saying, I would like to get some of these supplements. Is there a way for people to take advantage and to purchase uh, the supplements that you were talking about earlier in the show? Sure. Um, um, my wife is actually typing that now into the screen, so, so you'll be able to get that. But you can always just go online on our website at anwanwellness.com. You can order those online, and we'll ship them out within 48 hours. Love it, love it. Listen, now listen, there's so much to unpack. We don't have time to do it all, but we do want to bring you back. We want to talk about men's health specifically. We want to talk about women's health because it's one thing to talk about health in general, but I think that we need to get into the details of what we, from a gender perspective, need to do to have the type of healthy lifestyles 
uh, to live a long life. H how do you feel about talking about those conversations, you know, as we uh, go through the upcoming weeks? Sure. I agree wholeheartedly. And men's health and women's health um, are two of my favorite topics because we do have um, different issues at different times in our lives. And I'd be happy to come back. Um, I do, do want to give another plug for our whole day conference, though, um, on September 5th at the Marriott um, Emory um, at uh, Century Boulevard. It's on January 5th, so it's right at the start of the year when everyone is getting ready to start their Daniel Fast. Um, come out and hear all about men's health, women's health, as well as um, healthy lifestyle in a more in-depth fashion where you can get your own health plan um, to go out with. So uh, you can visit us on our Facebook page. It's called ANWAN, A-N-W-A-N, Regenerative Center um, dot com or anwanregencenter.com. You know, right. there's a scripture in the Bible that says, um, uh, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So a changed life takes place when you have a changed mind. And I know that repetition is the mother of all learning. So that's why one week is not enough. We want you to come on again and again and again and chip away at that old thinking because that old thinking uh, leads to sickness, death, and disease. And we want people to be healthy. We want people to go into 2019 with a renewed mind, a renewed vigor for life, and a pattern that will lead to their optimal health. So I appreciate you uh, being with us today. I look forward to uh, really unpacking some of these issues over the next couple of weeks. And once again, everybody, uh, to find out more about Dr. Donovan and all that he's doing, please go to his website. You should see the link right up on the screen. I tell you, there are many doctors that you can go to, but you know some doctors separate themselves from the rest because of the level of expertise, the knowledge, and the way they go about you know unpacking health in a holistic way. And that's the one thing we love about Dr. Donovan Christie and his beautiful wife and their practice. They take a holistic approach, which I think is the most ideal thing to do. So once again, tune in next week, same place, same time as we unpack more to prepare you for 2019. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Dr. Donovan. All right, thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.